Tubman's birthplace on Greenbrier Road, which is about a 10 mile walk. And I mean, I would really like to go there, but I don't know how I'm gonna make it to Easton tonight. You know what, I'll just see how long it takes me to get there and I'll figure it out. I just know I have to start there. Hi, I'm Io Janine Jackson, and I am the creator, director, and performer of There's a Million Miles Between Slavery and Freedom. Well, my body of work for the past two to three years has been very focused on looking back on history, especially slavery, because I want to know the process from where we came from to now. Uh, immediately when I saw all of the shootings, the, the killings of black males and females in America, I didn't want to just look to the immediate past. I wanted to go back to where conversations were like this about race and about Black Lives Mattering was prevalent. And so I went back to a lot of abolitionist speeches. I did some research on Frederick Douglass, but what really interested me and what really inspired me was Harriet Tubman and her journey from slavery to freedom. So I wanted to look at it from my perspective as a performance artist, as a dancer, as a choreographer, and really understand the physicality of a fugitive person. What does that mean to escape? How does that begin? Does it begin with a thought? Does it begin with, like how downtrodden does one have to be or does one just get inspired? Um, and to not know where you're going, to not have a clue as to how you're gonna get there, but just the faith that that's gonna happen. And I, the more research I did, the more I started to parallel Harriet's journey from her hometown in Cambridge, Maryland to Canada, St. Catharines, Canada, where she eventually ended up, um, and how it was paralleling my life um, in the sense of having faith. My idea for about a year now has been, what do I say, what do I do on this journey to help promote freedom within others? I started in our hometown and I walked about average 15 miles a day for about three days to Annapolis. And that journey was really humbling. It took my breath away. It made me think in a serious way the wonder of our journey as black people in America. Some people stopped to pick me up because they thought, who is this young black girl? Some people just picked me up because they thought I was a teenager. And I would get in the car with them and I would just basically interview them about what they thought freedom was. They had a lot of stories, um, a lot of personalized stories dealing with the way that they thought they looked, how much money they were making, um, being free from a life of alcoholism and uh, drug abuse. It was a very beautiful motley crew of people that I found. One older white woman who said, I don't know if I could have ever grown up black in America. I've seen what people do. I've heard what people do. And she gave me a ride to my next place. Like, I didn't know how I was really going to make the journey. I thought, oh, you know, I can walk this far. And I just got plain old tired at one point. And somebody picked me up. This journey will take you from a scene of, of me standing in a pool, a kiddie pool of malt liquor with fresh fruit just out of my reach, fresh water just out of my reach, and junk food, fried chicken, biscuits, Cheetos, Coca-Cola, like right here in front of my head. So there's a mobile hanging around me. 
And I compare the journey or the ill-fated heritage of Tantalus in Greek mythology who was punished by Zeus for a number of things, but just basically acting a little bit ratchet, not as refined as the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus. Um, so I compare his ill-fated heritage to that of blacks in America and the post-traumatic slave syndrome that we have inherited. Um, and then it goes on to the actual escape, which is more dance-based. And then it ends with a, a sanctuary, a sanctuary that I've created where you only get to see me in silhouette because I feel like a good part of that my journey to freedom is finding solace within myself and not asking for permission to people who are not subscribing to my preservation. I'm not going to feel marginalized anymore because how can I feel marginalized when I make me home base? When I make me the center? I'm not queer, I just am. No one else can tell our stories. I, I want to tell my story.